What are Eulerian graphs and circuits? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Map lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Let's say this ugly sketch is the layout of a section of a city. The colored in blocks are blocks of buildings, and the spaces between them are streets. And suppose you are a mailman who delivers mail throughout this section of the city, and perhaps you leave from your post office, starting here in the top right. Let's say you only have to travel through each street once in order to deliver all the mail on that street. Then, a question you might be interested in as a mailman who wants to deliver mail as efficiently as possible is can you find a way through the city where you travel through each street exactly once, delivering all the necessary mail, and then returning back at the place you started? That would be a very efficient way to deliver the mail, because you'd start and stop at the post office, and you would travel through each street only the one necessary time. This is a sort of problem that makes Eulerian circuits and graphs interesting. Of course, as the graph theorists we are, we can reframe this problem as a graph theory problem. What we'll do is represent the streets as edges, and we'll represent the intersections of streets as vertices. So there we go, we've got our beautiful graph representing the layout of this city. The green edges are the streets, and the blue vertices are the intersections of streets. And if you'd like to see the graph all by itself without the city layout, this is the graph. But I like having the city layout, so let's scroll back up. As a graph theory problem, the problem we're interested in is this. Does there exist a closed walk through this graph? that visits every edge exactly once. And remember, we're looking for a closed walk, so it starts and stops at the same place. Well, a closed walk that doesn't repeat any edges is called a circuit. So then we want to know if there is a circuit in this graph that visits every edge exactly once. For example, this here that I'm highlighting is a circuit. It's a closed walk that doesn't repeat any edges. It visits some vertices multiple times, but that's okay. But this is not quite what we're looking for, because we want our circuit to visit every single edge in the graph. So can we do it? Well, in this case, it turns out we can, and I am highlighting this circuit now. We're visiting every edge exactly once. We're visiting vertices multiple times, but that's okay. And then we end up at the same vertex we started at. So we've got this beautiful circuit that visits every edge exactly once, a very efficient way to deliver the mail. This, as you might have guessed, is called an Eulerian circuit, named after the brilliant Leonard Euler. If a graph has an Eulerian circuit, then it is an Eulerian graph. This is the beautiful graph we found our Eulerian circuit in, so since it has an Eulerian circuit, it is an Eulerian graph. Now let me go ahead and write some of this down. So remember, you should already know what a circuit is. A circuit is a closed walk that repeats no edges. Then an Eulerian circuit in a graph G is a circuit that passes through every edge in G. And of course, since it passes through every edge and it can't repeat edges, it passes through every edge exactly once. And then of course, an Eulerian graph is a graph that contains an Eulerian circuit. You might also see Eulerian circuits being called Euler tours or Eulerian cycles. Now let's scroll back on up to our Eulerian graph. For those of you who don't remember how we might describe a circuit in a graph, let's quickly go over it. We'll have to label these vertices, so I'll go ahead and do that now. So I have labeled the vertices of this Eulerian graph V1 through V11. Now I'll draw that Eulerian circuit again that we went over earlier. And then, of course, we can describe this Eulerian circuit as a sequence of vertices. We will just call it C. And the sequence of vertices, of course, begins with V1, then goes to V2, then to V3, and so on, following the red arrows that I drew on the graph. All right, there we go. You can see it's not too pretty. There are a lot of vertices in this Eulerian circuit. 
but that is a perfectly fine way to describe the Eulerian circuit that we drew in this graph. We go from V1 to V2 to V3 to V4 to V2 and so on. Of course, a very important question you might be wondering is how can we know if a graph has an Eulerian circuit or not? How do we know if a graph is Eulerian? Well, let's take notice of the degrees of the vertices in this graph. This vertex has degree 2, this vertex has degree 4, this vertex has degree 2, and this vertex has degree 4 so we've labeled the degree of each vertex in orange. You might notice that every degree is even. And it might be surprising, but that is a necessary and sufficient condition for a connected graph to be Eulerian. If the degree of every vertex in a connected graph is even, then that graph has an Eulerian circuit, and therefore is an Eulerian graph. Technically, a graph doesn't need to be connected to have an Eulerian circuit, but it will need to have exactly one non-trivial component. So usually when we talk about Eulerian graphs, we're considering connected graphs. So a connected graph is Eulerian if and only if all of its vertices have even degrees, which of course means that it contains an Eulerian circuit. So I think that is really cool and surprisingly simple. We're not going to prove this in today's video, but let me know if you'd like to see a proof in the comments, and I certainly recommend trying to figure it out yourself. And now that we're talking about Eulerian circuits and graphs, we're closing in on talking about a very famous mathematical problem, the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand what Eulerian circuits and Eulerian graphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Pictures of